Ever feel like your dog is living in a whole different sensory world? Like when they're glued to the ground, nose working overtime host speaker? Or when they totally lose it at the sound of, well, nothing that you can hear? Today we are diving deep, no pun intended, into the fascinating world of canine senses, host speaker. Specifically, how your dog's sense of smell and hearing work, and how you can use that knowledge to understand your furry friend better, host speaker. And our guide to this hidden world is this intriguing article from OnlineHund.dk, a Danish dog training website. Okay, let's unpack this. First up, that super-powered sense of smell. I've heard it's way stronger than ours, but how much stronger are we talking? Get this, a dog's sense of smell is up to 4 million times stronger than ours. It's like comparing a sniff to using a super-powered microscope. 4 million. No wonder they spend so much time with their noses glued to the ground. But what's going on in those canine brains when they're sniffing up a storm? It can't just be about smelling strength, right? Right, you're on to something. It's not just about how much they smell, but how they process those scents. Think of it this way. You smell your delicious spaghetti bolognese as one whole aroma, right? Expert speaker. Your dog smells the tomatoes, the garlic, the oreganos, even the individual spices in the meat all separately. It's like they're tasting with their noses. So that look of intense concentration, they're actually overwhelmed by all those individual scents. Exactly. They're picking up on layers upon layers of information, things we can't even perceive. It's like they're reading a complex map with every sniff, a map full of messages left by other dogs, mm. even emotions and hormones that we're totally oblivious to. Okay, that makes... Those endless sniffathons on walks make a lot more sense. But it also makes me wonder, is all that sensory input stressful for them? Like at the dog park, for instance. You've hit on a really important point. Places like dog parks with a cocktail of scents from every dog who's ever been there can be incredibly overwhelming for your dog. Expert speaker. Imagine trying to analyze every ingredient in every meal you've ever eaten. That's what their noses are dealing with. Wow, poor pups. No wonder they need a good nap after a trip to the park. And that's why training and engagement are so important. You can actually help your dog learn to focus on you and your presence, even amidst all that sensory overload. So we're not just being needy dog parents when we try to get their attention on walks. Not at all. Think of those walks as mental workouts for your dog, not just physical exercise. You're teaching them to navigate their world and engage with you, even with all those tempting smells around. So we've tackled those super sniffers, but now I'm really curious about their hearing. You mentioned selective hearing earlier, which I think a lot of dog owners can relate to. Host speaker. Is that a real thing or are our are, are dogs just masters of ignoring us? Oh, it's definitely real. But not in the way you might think. Dogs aren't just choosing to ignore us, expert speaker, although sometimes it feels that way, right? They actually hear a much wider range of frequencies than we do. So they're not being stubborn, they just can't hear us over all the other sounds. Not exactly. Think of it this way. Imagine you're hearing a dog whistle. You might not hear anything at all, right? Right. Or maybe just a faint sound. Exactly. But your dog, they hear that whistle loud and clear. In fact, while we might hear a high-pitched sound at, say, 20,000 hertz, a dog can hear it at twice that. Expert speaker. And that incredible sensitivity is rooted in their evolutionary history as hunters, relying on those sharp ears to locate prey. So all those high-pitched squeaky toys, those are like dinner bells mm -hmm. to their inner wolf. Is it mean to give them those? That's a fair question. Those toys definitely tap into that prey drive, but remember how sensitive their hearing is, expert speaker. That means those sounds, while enticing, can also be really stressful for some dogs. Almost like constantly dangling a steak in front of someone on a diet, they're triggered, but they can't always control their response. That actually explains a lot. I know some dogs go bonkers for squeaky toys, while others seem terrified of them. It's not just playtime, it's primal instinct we're dealing with. But if they're that sensitive, are there other sounds that we don't even think about that could be stressing them out? Absolutely. Things like the whirring of a blender, the beep of the microwave, or the high-pitched hum of fluorescent lights. Those sounds. Expert speaker. Practically imperceptible to us can be incredibly jarring to our canine companions. It's like they're constantly bombarded by noise pollution, which, as you can imagine, is not very relaxing. So that's why my dog freaks out every time the blender turns on. I always thought he was just being dramatic. But if those everyday sounds are so stressful for them, what about things like fireworks or thunderstorms? That must be torture for those sensitive ears. You're right. Those loud, sudden noises can be incredibly frightening for dogs. And it's not just the volume that's the problem, but also those high frequencies that we can't even hear. Expert speaker. Mm. It's like a sensory assault on all fronts. Speaking of different perceptions, did you know dogs have a preference for a certain type of voice? Really? 
You mean like a soothing voice or something? Yeah. Do they like it when I use my baby talk voice? Because I will admit I do that a lot. Studies have actually shown that, in general, dogs tend to respond more positively to women's voices. Interesting. Now that you mention it, my dog does seem to gravitate towards women. I always just assumed he had good taste. But if it's not about being nice, is there a scientific reason why they prefer those higher-pitched voices? So there's actually a reason my dog is such a mama's boy. Could it really be about the pitch of our voices? There's a good chance of that. Remember how we were talking about dogs hearing higher frequencies? Well, women's voices, on average, fall right within that range, especially compared to deeper male voices. Ah, uh, so it's not just about being nice. It's about literally sounding less threatening to those super sensitive ears. That makes a lot of sense, especially if they're already a bit stressed out by loud noises. Exactly. And this is especially true when it comes to scolding. You know when you use your firm voice because they've chewed on your favorite slippers. Expert speaker. A woman's voice, even when stern, is less likely to set off those alarm bells in a dog's brain compared to a deeper, booming male voice. So next time my dog gets into trouble, I should have my wife handle it. I'll have to try that out. But you did mention something interesting earlier about dogs sensing changes in our body chemistry. Host speaker. Mm. I've heard of dogs being able to detect things like cancer, but is that really possible? It really is fascinating. Their noses aren't just good for sniffing out treats. They're like superpower detectors of all sorts of things. For example, dogs can pick up on those subtle changes in our hormones. Hold on. So you're saying my dog knows when I'm stressed before I even walk through the door? It's very possible. Our bodies release cortisol when we're stressed, and dogs can detect even the tiniest shifts in our cortisol levels. They might not understand the concept of a work deadline, but they certainly know something's different. That's both incredible and a little creepy. But what about illness? Like, my dog always seems to know when I'm coming down with something before I do. There's actually a lot of research being done on that. It seems that those amazing noses can detect certain illnesses like cancer. Remember how their sense of smell is like a super-powered microscope? Expert speaker? They're picking up on those tiny changes in our body odor that we'd never notice, but that could signal something's off. So my dog is basically a furry, four-legged medical marvel. Mm. This is blowing my mind. Well... Maybe not quite a marvel, but they definitely have incredible sensory abilities that we're only beginning to understand. This deep dive has been truly eye-opening. I feel like I've learned more about my dog in the last 20 minutes than I have in years. So for everyone listening, what's the most important thing you'd want them to take away from this? That's a great question. I think the biggest takeaway is simply this. Our dogs experience the world in a completely different way than we do. Their senses are heightened, their perceptions are unique, and their understanding of the world is shaped by those differences. Expert speaker. So the next time you're out for a walk with your dog, or you're wondering why they're reacting a certain way, try to see the world through their eyes, or rather, their nose and ears. That is such an important point. It's all about empathy and understanding. By tuning into their sensory world, we can really strengthen our bond with our dogs and create a more harmonious relationship. Host speaker. And who knows, we might even learn a thing or two about ourselves along the way. Exactly. Well, on that note, this has been an incredible deep dive into the secret world of dog senses. And remember, a treat for your pup goes a long way. We'll catch you in the next episode.